Rule number five, no grit, no grind, only love. Uh, I'm an anti-grind, anti-grit guy. Uh, when, when teachers and coaches talk about kids needing more grit, it usually means you're forcing them to do something they hate and you're telling them to fight through it. How about giving them something they love to do? My athletes, their favorite part of the day is track practice. Part, partly because I tell them their favorite part of the day is track practice and they start like repeating it back to me. You know, it's, but I never saw practice as significant and meaningful ever, except for basketball practice. I, I thought basketball practice was important, but not football, not track. And I've seen so many of these practices, so many, and you have too. That's why you're laughing, is because this stuff is partially true. A lot of grab ass, and then you start bitching about the guys who aren't there to the guys who are there. And, and you do some type of mindless stretch. Our, our girls track team does. We don't do that. We don't do that. Uh, too much explanation. By the time they're done explaining their workout, my kids are going home. But, and see, I, don't, I never have to preach about today's athletes lacking toughness. My guys are competitors. They love it. Never have to talk about leadership. I mean, my guys, my guys just come out and they're A plus every day. I can't remember the last time I said that was not a good day for you in practice. I cannot remember it. As I said early, earlier, uh, track ruined perfect days. Like, like three times every spring in Illinois, the sun's out and the sky's blue. And if I, as a track athlete, I'd say, if it wasn't for track, this would be a really good day. I do not want, I don't think kids are good at things that they dread. Like school. Never forget we're good at what we like and obsessed with what we love. But yet English still forces kids to read The Grapes of Wrath. Forces them to. When, when I hear parents say, oh, the kids today, they're cheaters, they're lazy, they blah, 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 blah. Heck, they're not lazy at their cell phone. They work at that. They work at video games. And my kids work at track. And my chemistry students work at chemistry. What's the difference? They don't like the stuff that adults are pushing on them. And they like the stuff that I'm doing for them. Or the stuff they're interested in. So the key is to find a way to get them excited about what they're doing. Promote, promote, promote. That's one way we get them excited. Uh, I know there's people, they don't tell me to my face, but that, that don't like me because I over-promote too much of a Twitter guy and all that stuff. Track season in the Midwest is cold, windy, and wet. Most parents don't come to meets. Most track teams are made up of kids that couldn't hit a baseball. What are you doing to promote our sport? Our sport sucks, especially in the North. As soon as you understand that, then you start to say, how can we make it unsuck? Does your schedule attract athletes to your program? Most people have the schedule that their AD made for them, and most ADs aren't track coaches. We travel, that poor coal mining town, Southern Illinois, we traveled all over the place. Say, well, gee, I thought you were poor. We were. Every kid brought 20 bucks. We slept four to a room, and we found some old station wagons and things, and we went to meets. When I went to Franklin, Tennessee, Tennessee, I'm sorry, Tennessee people, but track was so bad in Tennessee that we had to go to Georgia for our first meet. We went to Atlanta. Uh, we, we traveled anywhere to get out of central Tennessee. And once again, 20 bucks a kid. I'd ask parents, hey, can you find us a couple of vans? They love to do stuff like that. At Plainfield North, we, do, we don't travel as much, but we do go to two meets in April down to the St. Louis area because it might be 30 degrees warmer there. 
And you know what our kids talk about? They don't talk about the state meet, they talk about the trips. You've got to create something about track that is more than the 4x4. Four four. How about uniforms? I tell you, cats like white uniforms. These guys, I, I, we busted these out on this day. They set the 4x1, 4x2, and 4x4 record in our conference that day. I swear to God, it was the speed suits. It was the speed suits. Uh, the white get dirty. They lasted about a year and a half. So now we wear black, but we still have lightning bolts and tribal tigers. And then we bust these out for big meets. So we look like superheroes. Has like abs painted on them and lightning bolts and stuff. And they will run faster when they're running good speed suits. I, I, I get these from Knockout Sports in Austin, Texas. They do a really good job. Uh, we put out posters anytime we break a record, we break a lot of records. I take pictures of every meet, I send them to our hurdle coach's mom, and she puts out a Photoshop thing, we work on our poses. I'm like, okay, what pose you guys got going on this time? You know, I mean, we do all that stuff. We won our conference, we had 15 guys that were all conference, that means they got top four in our conference, and the poster has every one of these pictures I took. Uh, I don't coach at meets, coaching is overrated. Uh, I take pictures with my camera. My camera now has Wi-Fi that communicates with my phone. I can take beautiful pictures and tweet out right away that somebody just qualified for state. I even tweet pictures of guys that have just puked in a garbage can because they like it. I mean, they're, they're like, they're proud of this stuff. And as you see up there, I don't know if you can see it, but I said, not sick, acidic. When people puke, they're not sick. It's not a virus. They're acidic. They're just purging hydrochloric from their gut so they don't die of uh, acidosis. That's what they're doing. You're not sick. You're fine. I love posting. In. This is 24 second drill. We do that indoors on a 178 meter track. It's hard to do. Uh, but I love to show year by year progression. Uh, by the way, this guy did not run high school track, but he jumped into a race in basketball shoes without blocks and ran 10.90. Uh, this guy needs to be running track at your school. He will not run track though because he plays basketball unless you start doing some things that might attract a guy like this to your team. I promote upcoming races. These are the guys we beat at the state meet. Remember all four returning from the state champions the year before? Two of them were juniors, two of them were sophomores, and we were going down to St. Louis, and they were going down there too. And, and I said, hey, you know, look, look at these fast. They had guys that ran 1066, 87, 88, and 03. And I said, tomorrow we race, and I did hashtag don't look back. Because Marcellus was running anchor. And we beat him. So we, we beat the returning state champs twice last year. Cord rank publish, but when you do this, you, you feed the cat. Because remember, cats are extremely competitive, unlike distance runners. Distance runners, a lot of them just run. But cats are so competitive. So I, yes, we have 40 minute practices, but I, I enter times on spreadsheets for an hour after practice. So these are 40s from last year, and these are uh, 10 meter flies. And sometimes I go geeky and graph stuff. This is four years of, of the kid in blue was a guy that played in the band. And, and he came to me and as you can tell over four years, he got fast. The kid in the red was homeless. Uh, he only ran for three years. These are our practice rankings. Uh, we do 30 meter starts. Uh, we do all kinds of funky metrics. We love the PR in practice. I mean, every track coach, even bad ones, celebrate PRs and meets. But when you start celebrating PRs in practice, whew, I mean, you're just tripling, quadrupling. You're just creating a juggernaut of enthusiasm. I saw the Jamaican sprint coach a few years ago, maybe eight years ago, and he said they've done such a great job with culture that their kids carry around a water bottle. Like eight-year-olds, nine-year-old track athletes carry around a water bottle with them. My kids carry their spikes. You know, I don't know when this happened, but 
every kid has a book bag, you know, like a backpack now. I never saw a backpack in the 70s. But everybody has it. They have their spikes tied to their backpack because they will never show up for a speed day ever without their spikes because I record, rank, and publish. They don't want to be embarrassed. Remember, cats are competitive.